Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to perform an HTTP put request using the ASP32 and Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from DFROB. So we have already covered in previous videos how to perform HTTP GET and POST requests, uh, but PUT is also a very uh, useful method uh, from HTTP and it is typically used in REST APIs in order for us to update an already existing um, resource uh, in the backend. I'm not going to enter here in detail about uh, where it should be used or not. I'm going to leave a link in the description that uh, has a very interesting comparison between uh, the PUT request and the POST request because some people misuse the POST request. Uh, but again, I'm not going to enter in, in the details of how REST works uh, and when this should be used. So basically, uh, for this tutorial, we are going to reach uh, test, uh, a test API, a fake API that is online for us uh, to perform some requests and to receive an answer. And basically, we are going to reach an endpoint uh, where we are going to simulate that we are updating an already existence uh, an already existent resource so we are going to make a put request to that uh, to that endpoint but keep in mind that since this is a test api uh, the request that we are going to do is not going to affect anything in the backend nothing is going to be updated or changed in the backend and the api will always answer to us um, like an entity has been updated. Uh, nonetheless, this is very useful, this, this online API I can show you here, it's called JSON Placeholder, because it basically allows us to test uh, these simple things like doing uh, put requests, uh, post requests, get requests, without uh, having to, to deploy a full server to do these tests. So I'm going to show you here in Postman a very useful tool uh, to test APIs. I'm going to show you what, what is expected for us to receive when we reach this endpoint. Basically, we have here uh, the whole domain name and then we are going to, to reach this endpoint, this resource called posts. So basically, uh, think of a resource existing in the back and representing some posts, for example, in a website. And for this particular ID, this route parameter here represents the ID of the entity that we are trying uh, to update. Basically, I'm going to simulate an update uh, to an entity with ID 1. Note that here I'm just going to, to do the request for testing. What, what goes in the body simply doesn't matter because I've already said uh, that the, the backend will simply not look into this content and it will uh, answer back to us like uh, like it, it correctly updated the resource but basically if we send the update as you can see here it returns back to us uh, an OK status code and basically it returns to us a JSON with the ID of the entity that was supposedly updated. So basically this is was what uh, we are going to test and this is the endpoint we are going to reach but obviously this should work with whatever endpoint you, you want to test and to make a put request to. So, looking into the actual Arduino code, um, the first thing we need to do is, is uh, dealing with the includes. Obviously, we need the Wi-Fi.h uh, library so we can connect our ASP32 to the Wi-Fi network. And then we need the HTTP client.h library, which basically exposed to us a very nice higher level API that allows us to do uh, requests and in this particular case to do uh, post uh, put requests. So, uh, naturally, we are going to need the credentials of the Wi-Fi network, and more precisely, the network name, or SSID, and the password. So, you should change these placeholders here uh, with the values, the credentials for the network to which you want to connect your ASP32. So, moving on to the setup function, this will be very similar to what we have been covering in previous tutorials. We start by opening a serial connection, then we connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network uh, using the begin method of the Wi-Fi extern variable that gets available by including the Wi-Fi.edge library. So, and we pass as input as first parameter the name of the network and as second the password uh, of the, the Wi-Fi network that, that we have just defined here. Then since this will immediately return, uh, we need to pull here for the connection. Note that we cannot do anything else uh, in our program before we are connected to the Wi-Fi network. So in this case, polling for the connection is totally acceptable. Um, 
because we, we really cannot do anything else be, before we are connected. So we are just pulling here and waiting for the connection to be established. Obviously, this is a very simple use case. So we are not dealing with all those corner cases where we cannot connect to the Wi-Fi network or if the credentials are wrong. So basically, if, if some of these things miss, we'll keep here in an infinite loop. But the aim of this tutorial is not to focus on the Wi-Fi connection, but rather on the request. So I'm assuming everything will go fine and we just will just wait here for the connection to be established before we try to do the actual request. So after this we just print here a message to the user indicating that uh, the connection was uh, established and then we are going to implement the request code here in the main loop so this means that we are going to uh, periodically do a request to the server obviously with the delay between each each iteration of the main loop so we are not constantly polling the server but basically we are going to do this periodically note that this is just a safeguard uh, as you can see here which is we are just checking if we are still connected to the Wi-Fi network before we even try to do the request because if we are no longer connected to the Wi-Fi network there's no point on trying to do the request so assuming that we are and we enter in this if condition the first thing we are going to do is um, uh, creating an object of this class, HTTP client, which basically will expose to us the API, uh, the methods that we need uh, to set up this this put request and then to um, to perform effectively perform this request uh, to the server. So after we declare an object of this class, HTTP client, we need to call the begin method on this object and pass as input the full endpoint that we want to reach. Basically, as I've said, this is the the, uh, the fake API that we are going to use, very useful one, and then this endpoint simulating that we are dealing with a resource uh, consisting of posts. It's these, these are some posts, simulating some posts, for example, in a website, and then to this particular uh, post here, uh, which we are trying to update. So basically, this, this just set up the, the connection, taking in consideration that at this point we did not yet do the request, we are just setting it up. Then, and this is a very important step uh, in a real case application, since we are doing a put request, probably we are uh, most of the cases we, we have a body uh, that we are sending to the to the to the server for example as i've said to update an existing an already existing entity and uh, so it's very important to tell to the to the server what is the content type uh, that we are using for the body so the server knows how to interpret it if it's json if it's plain text etc although um this is not that much important for our simple example because, as I've already said, uh, the backend will accept whatever we, we send to it. In a real application scenario where the backend is effectively doing some type of computation over the body of the put request that we are sending, it's very important to specify this content type correctly. So this content type of the body is basically specified as an adder of the request, so we can use this add adder uh, method to to um, to set any any arbitrary header of our request and this method receives as first input the name of the header that we want to set and as i've already said it is the content type and as second input the actual value of the header since as i've already said uh, the backend doesn't care and will always um, act like it succeeded in interpreting the body of our request uh, so i'm using here uh, the content type text slash plain because it's really not important what we send uh, to, this, to this particular server. So moving on, and this is how we do the actual request, because uh, until here we are just setting up the request, but to do the actual put request, we need to call this put method on our HTTP object and pass as input uh, the body content of our request. In this case, it's just a testing string. It's, it doesn't even represent the, the posts uh, the post object that we are supposed to be updating, because again, it doesn't matter. But obviously, this uh, the the argument of this put method is the content that you want to send to the server. So, uh, as input, this is what we should pass. And as out, and it's it's from this method call that uh, the actual request will be sent to the server. As output we'll get uh, uh, an integer that should represent the response code from the server uh, in case it is greater than zero, in case the request succeeded 
uh, in, in being sent to the server, then we get a value greater than zero modeling or representing the HTTP response code from the server. Note that here when I say that if, if the request succeeded means that we were able to reach the server. Um, Imagine that the server, in the real case scenario, had some error processing our our response and and um, and returned to us a 500, uh, which means internal error. For this API, it doesn't matter because we have successfully reached the server, and then this is a, a problem from our application. Probably some um, our server was not uh, had some bug or or was not uh, could not process our content. Um, correctly. Nonetheless, for this API, for the put API, the, um, the request was successful. On the other hand, if, the, um, if this value is lesser than zero, that it means an internal error occurred on um, SP32 side, uh, so it means that the request could not be sent, and then it should be seen as an internal error and as a problem that we probably need to solve uh, on our client side. So basically, we are going to store this value and we are going to do here a simple error check because um, we are going to check if this error is greater than zero and if it is, we assume that the response was, um, uh, if that the request was successfully sent to the server and we got the response back. And on the other hand, if it is lesser than zero, we assume that there was some error sending the put request and uh, to help us debugging and understanding the problem, we simply will print here uh, that internal code and there's an enumerated value uh, defined on the Arduino core that uh, gives some more information about this code. So basically, assuming the, the best case scenario where everything went fine, what we are going to do is getting the payload of the response from the server by calling this getString method uh, on the HTTP object. This method takes no arguments and returns to us the response as a string. So from this point onward, we simply need to uh, print the, the response. I'm, I'm going to print here both uh, the response codes. Uh, it should be an OK, a 200. And uh, then I'm going to print the actual response payload. So after this point, after uh, passing this uh, if-else block, uh, it means that we have already sent a request and we have already processed either the answer or the error. And from this point onward, we should um, you should call this end method here on our HTTP object in order to uh, end the request and, and to free the resources. So basically this was, uh, this is it, the main flow, how, how we do the put request and then, uh, as I've said before, we are going to back uh, to go back to the beginning of the main loop and do this uh, in a loop with a small delay of 10 seconds between each iteration. This else that you see here is just uh, the else condition for when uh, we are trying to do the request but we are not connected to the Wi-Fi network, so I'm catching here uh, this condition so we can just print a message to the serial port uh, to help in debugging in case you face some problems trying to run this code and if it is related to the Wi-Fi connection. So in terms of coding, this is this is mainly it. It's very simple and very similar to what we have been covering before for both the GET and the PUT request. And I have already uploaded this code to my SP32 and I'm going to show you here um, the serial monitor. As you can see, it is already running, but I'm going to reset the device. Um, and as you can see here, it is connecting again to the Wi-Fi network. And we can see here that we get uh, the 200 response saying that uh, um, the server could process uh, our requests correctly. And then here it is the, the payload returned by the server. And as you can see, it's similar to what we have obtained here uh, in Postman. So this is it. This is how we do a, a very simple put request uh, using the SP32 and Arduino core. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you have enjoyed.